where gun culture meets the gospel. This is Armed Lutheran Radio. Hi, folks. <laughs> Welcome to the uh, March 2020 online hangout for the Reformation Gun Club. As you can tell, this is probably what we're going to be talking about today. I am your host, Lloyd Bailey, the Armed Lutheran. And this is the March 2020 online hangout. Cheers, coronavirus people. This isn't going to work. So for some of us, as uh, for some of us introverts, I got this on right. Yeah, there we go. For some of us introverts, our lives are exactly the same as they've always been. So how are is uh, <laughs> so uh, how is uh, your life? That's uh, that's the question, and that's what we're going to be talking about probably today, as you can tell from our little props. Um, how is the coronavirus affecting your life? We're just going to sit around and chat and and uh, see how things are going with you. I don't know um, who is going to be able to join us. I think Mia is going is available. She may be, I hope, will be able to join us. Maybe Pastor Bennett, although he was on with me very late recording um, episode 212 last night. And uh, believe it or not, we actually, uh, we recorded for... St- something like whoops uh we actually recorded for i think an hour and a half and i recorded uh i was doing some editing today and and actually came up with 12 bloopers for yeah for our recording session last night it was a hoot um there's so much content that i don't know what i'm going to do with it all if I if I cut it down to like 40 minutes, it's going to end up being like 45 minutes of extra content for the Reformation Gun Club. We'll see. Uh, I may just do Corona Palooza for two weeks and uh, then it'll be um, two weeks uh, to uh, episode 212 and 213 will be just coronavirus wall to wall. That's probably what we're going to do. So before I bring in I pass the pastor and uh, and Mia and uh, invite in some other guests uh, real quick, got the um, Nicene Creed T-shirt. Let me get this banner out of the way so you can actually see it. Got the Nicene Creed T-shirt on. Um, I bring that up because there is a sale going on right now at Threadless, uh, Threadless.com. Actually, you can get there at armedlutheran.us slash T-shirts and all T-shirts I think for another week or um, 15 bucks. So check that out at armedlutheran.us slash t-shirts. Okay. Let's see who we can get in here. looks like, Oh no, Mia dropped out and she's back. Hey, hey. <laughs> I'm, I'm testing out internet connections. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Are you off in the wild in some in some hunting lodge somewhere, or what are you up to? No, I'm at home. Oh, okay. Are you like so? You're like Pastor Bennett, and you've got uh, wonky internet out in the middle of nowhere. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we fiddled around with internet connections last night for like um, twenty minutes, or trying to to figure out connection problems last night. What before we got started recording, and. Pastor Bennett has to actually stream off of his phone, which is fun. So he had to reboot his phone and then reboot his computer. And yeah. So, yeah, I deal with that a lot too. (laughs) And I see his microphone. I don't think he is at there. He comes. He's. uh, I don't know what's going on with your mic, though. Can you not hear me? Oh, I can hear yours. I can't. Oh, okay. I have to mute uh, John's for some reason. You've got some serious feedback issues going on there. I've got a... I'm not sure what's going on with that. There's a static. Sounds like a swarm of bees in your uh, in your office there. 
faster. <laughs> I'm going to unmute you and see if it helps. Oh, hey, they're, they're gone. We chased away the bees. You can hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> okay, good, good. I love the collection of swag. Thank you, thank you. We got uh, the Re- Reformation Gun Club shirt. We got the the mug and <laughs> looking good. Yes, awesome. I, I was going to wear my uh, you know respirator mask, but I figured that uh, would make for very poor audio quality. I, I beat you to it. <laughs> I don't know whether you saw the first few minutes. I no, came no, on I the, didn't. I came on the air with this on. It, it's not pretty. It's of course this isn't either, but. Um, uh, it made it a little hard to, uh, imbibe and to, um, uh, to talk. So, so you know how is pretty though? This is my recommendation for, uh, fighting <laughs> off coronavirus there. It's the yeah. prohibition edition. It's uh 50% <laughs> by volume and it is delicious. There you go. Cleanse yourself from the inside out, drive away the coronavirus from the inside out. Yes, it, it does boost your <laughs> antioxidants, so that helps to fight off infection. <laughs> well, um, everyone will hear uh, a little bit of uh, what's going on after. Oh, no, we lost Mia. I was just about to ask her a question. Well, darn, she'll come back here in a moment. She has the same sort of Internet um, uh, issues that everyone else that you and I were dealing with last night, I think. She um, connects through her phone a lot. Um, let's see. I'm going to be right, right back. I'm going to turn on the rest of the lights down here so that uh, you can see me a little better. Okay. And let's see. All right. So basically what we're going to be talking as we wait for everybody else to, to uh, get their studios and their internet issues uh taken care of basically what there we're we going to be there we go basically what we're going to be talking about tonight no i mean we got one topic really and it's the topic that's that's dominating the news there she is bring her back in there all right um so basically the the uh the, the topic i guess that that uh it's on everybody's minds the world over is this stupid coronavirus that's upended the world economy and, and uh, uh, has everybody's kids at home and is now shuttering everybody's businesses. So I thought we'd uh, commiserate together and, and uh, find out what everybody, what everybody's doing and how they're dealing with it and, and what it's like in, in, uh, in your neck of the woods. Um, Pastor, you and I talked about this uh, last night and, and we will hear a little bit about it. Uh, oh no. Coronavirus is infected. <laughs> Mia's internet connection. See, I, I have the benefit of having a strong 4G connection where I live. So I rarely ever have problems. I used to have terrible problems, but it's been really good lately. Yeah, when we first moved here, there really were no options for um, for internet except for um, DSL, which was terrible and um within a because we moved into a new a new neighborhood and it hadn't even been finished i think our house was under construction when we first bought it and all the the most of the houses up the street were were in various states of construction and so internet was just terrible and we got that and then within a week i canceled and then we we finally got we had to deal with cable and then I hate cable. And finally we got, um, uh, fiber optic. And so now we've got gigabit. So I haven't had to deal with, Oh, I'd love to have that. I haven't had to deal with the, the horrors of DSL or streaming through your phone. Eh, Poor Mia. (laughs) She's got the black plague because that's all I see right now. That's all we see. And it's, yep, it's infected her phone. So, um, let's see. So Edwin is watching us. Edwin, uh, wants to wish everybody good evening. Edwin, good to, good to hear from you. Dan is watching. So the uh, Cuddy Sark is a good choice. Um, 
Dave Lunenberg is with us as well. <laughs> and I guess he's referring to, because when I started out the show, I had the mask on. <laughs> Robert is uh, is joining us as well, watching with us as well. Recommend Baku Rum if you get a chance. Ooh, that sounds good. Um, let's see here. So, all right. Mia it's has working. <laughs> <laughs> For a second. I don't know how long I'll last. <laughs> <laughs> so let's ask the question quick. So what it, Pastor Bennett and I talked about this last night, and you'll hear about it a little more on the, on the uh, show this weekend. Talk about this. Give us your thoughts on this craziness that's going on with the with the coronavirus and how it's affected things um, for you in your neck of the woods. Uh, really here, we live in a small community, so we're not we're not we're not seeing the mass hysteria. But there are a lot of people that still are stockpiling on uh, chicken. And toilet paper. <laughs> I know. Isn't and that hamburger, a weird... maybe. Um, <laughs> weird stuff. Right. And I personally haven't been to the store. Hank's been going to the store. Um, but it's kind of interesting, the things that we've seen. Um, as far as, like, work-wise, all of my trips have been canceled for the next two months. So I'm kind of on mm. vacation, I guess. I mean, I work from home, but it's nice to be home. Um, but then also... I know some of my editors are worried they're not going to have jobs, which means I probably may not have a job, you know, like some of my freelance stuff. So right. it's really interesting. And I mean, day by day, it's just kind of like, well, whatever happens. So is yeah. it a, is it affecting um, the uh, the guide business yet? The hunting guide business yet? You starting to see cancellations or delays? Domestically, not too much, but internationally. I mean, I don't guide internationally, but I know a lot of the guides who are outside of the country, like nobody can travel. So they're calling saying, Hey, we've got really cheap hunts right now. Can you come <laughs> drive, you know, drive here, drive there before the borders were closed, like to go to Canada, right. stuff like that. So, but here um, in Colorado right now, Turkey season starts in about 21 days or so and not really seeing any cancellations for that yet. Right. Waiting everybody's kind of playing wait and see and hopefully in 21 days things are you know fingers crossed it's not quite as mm -hmm. bad in 21 days um so hank's yeah. not coming home from the grocery store with a black eye and and you know <laughs> <laughs> no fighting with people but over toilet i know paper. that he, he's definitely carrying because there are a few weird scenarios going on and um I mean, he always carries, but he's like, he told me, if you go to town, make sure you carry. I'm like, yes. okay. Yeah. Well, Pastor, you were relating a story uh, when we were talking last night when we were recording episode 212 about um, uh, the dang some of the dangers, some of the stories that you've uh, heard firsthand about going to the grocery store and people getting robbed not for the stuff in their wallet or their purse or their car, but for their groceries. Right. Right. Yeah. It's uh, and that's happening in multiple places in California. There's reports of in the Bay area, which should be absolutely no surprise to anyone that there's violence happening in the Bay area, uh, but people getting mugged for their groceries and uh, one town over. Well, I don't know if you call it a town, one city over from where I grew up, uh, Pacoima, Pacoima, they're having uh, reports of people shopping at the grocery store and the grocery store is telling people, make sure you bring someone with you when you go shopping because there are homeless people waiting in the parking lot that are mugging people on their way back to their vehicles. Yeah. Yeah. And my wife went out this morning <laughs> at uh, nine o'clock. Now we have a grocery store that's a couple of, of miles away from the house and, and, uh, Usually Friday is our grocery pickup day and we, and, but our, all of our local grocery stores have basically said, don't even bother doing the online thing. There is no, there's nothing. Um, or unless you want to place an order and wait two weeks. Um, so she was going to get up 
the um the the closest store to us they open at eight and they reserve the first hour they they've asked only um the elderly come for the first hour and throughout the day they're trying to um sort of prioritize those those people so if they come in they get to the front of the line um so that they can get in and out quickly the the first hour they're trying to limit it only to those who are uh, elderly so that they're not exposed as much to other people and they and they're they're closing earlier so that they have a couple of extra hours at the end of the day to completely uh, restock and sanitize the store so she went this morning at, at mm-hmm. as soon as elderly hour was over and um and and it wasn't too bad but and she was like well if if i don't find everything that i need i'll just go to walmart i was like no 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 <laughs> not gonna happen if you don't find everything you need come on home we'll try another day it's not even worth it because people uh, uh former guest i don't know whether you've heard the episode that had aaron craig on aaron uh was one of the good some it was a good samaritan he's from the dfw area um he had gotten out of his car to uh, stop a, an assault in progress with his firearm and then ended up in a whole legal thing. Uh, I think that was season two. I think that was 2017. And he posted something on Facebook where he had gone to like 12 or to 15 different stores just trying to finish his grocery list. And I was like, that's not even, wow, not even worth it. And, and, he posted about the different things he had seen, some of it funny and some of it kind of eh, a little sketchy. And and he went to places that I would never go to the grocery store. I mean, South Dallas, I would never go to the grocery store, but if you're really hard up for TP, I guess, you know, there's, <laughs> <laughs> there's, I guess there's uh there, there's um you'll go to great lengths if you, if you completely run out, but, um, uh, yeah, so yeah, I, I've been surprised at, at the, the way people have reacted to this. Um, and like pastor, one of the, one of the poll quotes from yesterday was talking about, you know, um, the, the amount of TP that people are, you know, trying to hoard up, you could they'd have to go to Chipotle for a month. <laughs> <laughs> Every, every meal for a month and you wouldn't need the TP that we've seen some of the people trying to hoard up. I don't understand it. And I don't understand the kind of the, the attitude and the animosity that some of the, I mean, just the, the rudeness that we've seen in some of these, it's almost like black Friday over tele uh, over toilet paper. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm fortunate enough to live in a fairly rural area in Minnesota where the people are still nice. Uh, But it seems like there's this weird tension in the stores that people are being overly polite, but on edge at the same time. And, you know, it, but it's, it's really sad. I've been fortunate enough to get everything that I needed because I started uh, shopping a week before it started getting bad out here and mm-hmm. just to make sure we had enough, you know, canned food and the necessities on hand. And there were some things that didn't get. Um, and so I was at Walmart one day and there's a lady who was, you know, I'm just get, picking up some Kleenex because I thought we were running low, which we weren't, but there's a lady looking for toilet paper cause she is all out and she's having to settle for uh, tissues instead. And it's, you know, what does this world come to where you got a guy that, has, you know, 9,600 rolls of toilet paper stocked up in his basement and no one else can get it. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's, it's the panic. That's the problem. Everybody, because you don't need the toilet paper for this virus. It's a respiratory virus. You're never going to need the toilet paper for, to treat the symptoms of this. But once everybody starts stockpiling it and hoarding it you start everybody panics and is like oh my gosh i'm gonna run out and there's not gonna be any so i've got to go to the grocery store and buy as much as i can 
and everybody starts doing it. And that's what the crazy, that's what get, makes it crazy. And so like you were talking about when we, we talked last night, it's the fear is actually worse than the, than the, than the virus. Yeah, it's, and it blows my mind. It really only takes one person to start the panic. Uh, you know, you, you get one person who says, well, I'm going to go to Sam's Club and I'm going to buy all the toilet paper. And you create this artificial shortage. Then everybody's thinking, well, gosh, I better get toilet paper now or I'm not going to have anything to wa- wipe my behind with when uh, this is going into week number three. Right. Yep. Yep. Mia, I, it's I, made. For, it's made for some really good memes. <laughs> yes, we're going to have a lifetime of toilet paper memes. That <laughs> if we can survive all of this, we've got memes to last us a generation. Um, yeah. A friend of mine, and I, I mentioned this when we were recording last night. A friend of mine came down for a match in Houston, and he shared a picture on Facebook when he flew back to to Phoenix. Somebody had actually checked a bag. And it was a 48 pack of toilet paper that he had wrapped up with, um, with duct tape. I, <laughs> who checks a 48 pack of toilet paper to fly on the, on an airplane? I mean, <laughs> what on earth has come Maybe over Maybe you can't us? find it in Phoenix right yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, and it looks like in the comments, I'm thinking it's the Russos who are logged in as a Facebook user, but they said the hotels are only allowing one roll. <laughs> and I have a friend who stayed at a hotel and they took all the rolls in the hotel room. So <laughs> that's probably why <laughs> hotels are resorting to only allowing one roll in the room. <laughs> yeah, that's probably true. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think that is the Russos. I don't, I got to. Yeah, there's somebody that says Facebook user, but it doesn't say, ah, Team Russo. Yep, that's who it is. That's In Arizona, is. the alternative is cactus. I would start with tortillas before you go to the cactus. They're a little bit softer. Yeah. <laughs> Much better, awesome. Much better option. I like that. Who put the one with the Hillary Clinton book that that's the new toilet paper? <laughs> Hillary's book or... Um, or um, what's the uh, what's the prosperity preacher guy? Joel Osteen's books are always uh, always a good choice. Um, have they? Wh- what is going on locally and statewide in Colorado? What what states? And one of the things we talk about on the show this weekend is about how government has been re- reacting to this, and usually it's not good. It's usually, you know, the the simplest thing has been shut down schools and send all the kids home at the very worst. And we even after we talked, John, it's gotten worse in a couple of states. We saw today Pennsylvania basically said non all non-essential businesses are to shutter. Mm-hmm. Uh, California, I think, has even followed suit. And I think maybe. New York has has come out since then and even uh, gone one step further. What is what's Colorado doing? What is your local um, uh, county or the the cities near you? What are they doing, and how is it uh, is it starting to affect people there in terms of the economy and in terms of of the travel? economy? Yes, yeah. Um, It's so, I'm trying to think of the dates because the dates are all just blending since I'm only in one place now. When all you're doing is sitting um, at home, it's hard hard to remember one day from the next. Yeah, and I've really been trying to stay off the internet and not watch the news because it's just, it's insane. But um, last Friday, our governor announced no gatherings bigger than 250 people. And we actually, at the time, were setting up for a banquet and that was going to be the following day. And we had to tear everything down and put it back because we had 500 people. Um, And so this week they announced no gatherings larger than 10. And that has affected church. Whoa. So um, the pastor Packer that you met in Pagosa, he is doing... um, a uh, online 
type of register and 10, there's nine slots. So it'd be 10 people, including him. And he's got 20 minute increments where you can sign up to go for services that way. So um, that was really smart of him to do that. And then um, the pastor down in Farmington, he does online videos on YouTube Mm -hmm. and same with the Durango pastor. He does Facebook videos. Mm -hmm. And so um, in Pagosa is the only place where you're really getting served because you can go in person, but you have to kind of find a slot to fit in there. That makes, wow. That's (laughs) the pastors already have a, uh, a tough enough job as it is, mm-hmm. especially this time of year, trying to juggle 10 congregants at a time and manage all yeah. the time slots. That's and, and sanitize in between. Right. Yeah. So the cushions have been taken off the pews in the first three rows, and then he'll sanitize those, allow people in. You have to be six feet apart um, and then right. serve them. They leave and he sanitizes. And then the next session can come. And I haven't oh. been there yet, so I don't know how it's going. But he's he, everybody's kind of playing it by ear and seeing how it goes. Gotcha. Yeah. Pastors, uh, did you start, uh, did I see today you started a devotional series online? Yeah, I started a daily devotional. Um, I'm going to be doing that. I'm calling it Praying the Psalms, where we'll have a meditation on one of the Psalms and a prayer and uh doing that except for on Sunday and on Wednesday where I'll be uh, streaming a sermon on Sundays. It may be a full church service with just myself and my family um, because we have uh, discontinued all public services for the next two weeks. Um, Whereas in the the local Catholic diocese out here, they have discontinued services until May 15th. So they're going almost two full months. Yes. Um, I don't know what we're going to do after the first two weeks. We're going to reevaluate. I really don't want to continue not having public services. Uh, It's just, and out here, I I love the idea of being able to sign up online for a slot. I'd had uh, uh, pitched the idea of having multiple services throughout the week where people can sign up for a slot and uh, they come and attend that service. I can't do it online though, because I've got a good number of people that are elderly that don't use the internet. Uh, So Mm -hmm. it's kind of a tough situation, Uh, but you know, that's one of the reasons I've gone to using or doing the, uh, the daily devotional because for a lot of people being in church is a big part of their weekly life. And having that that void in their life right now, it creates an even deeper yearning for the word. So uh, I had a few people make that request. And what better time to start than now? Yep. A couple of comments I wanted to uh, to share here first from Dan. I uh, love your, your daily broadcasts. Uh, really enjoy your sermons as well, Pastor, uh, and appre- have appreciated them for a while. And uh, uh uh, do you do the the Wednesday, uh, sir, Lenten sermons as well? Yes, yeah. Good. I this this year I focusing on meditations on the uh, words of Christ from the cross, and uh, we started on Ash Wednesday with that. Uh, so I'm doing I'm continuing with that sermon series. This last week I was trying to get a letter pushed out on Wednesday, and I ended up getting home late. So I just said I'll do it tomorrow. So that came out on Thursday. Um, here's a comment from David and I want you to, and you sort of address this in the show or in our, from our recording last night. And I'm not sure, I haven't decided how I'm going to release this, whether it's going to come out this weekend or whether it's going to come out next weekend or whether it's going to be in, in an extra, I haven't decided because I've got so much content. Um, so I thought I would, this is a perfect question, if you could if you could sort of address, or, or a point, if you could address this. Our town in Connecticut mandated all religious institutions cancel all public gatherings. And we talked about this um, in recording episode 212. And this, to me, is troubling. Um, yes. It, it is a clear violation of the First Amendment. 
Um, we could even say that this ascends to the level of persecution if they are also going to accompany any violations of this mandate with some sort of penalty. You know, if we're going to fine you or arrest you for holding public services, you know, then you've most certainly reached the, the level of, of religious persecution. Uh, the problem with what's happening right now is that there is so much panic and so much fear that the government has, is not shy whatsoever about um, uh, impending on our, our rights as free citizens. And it seems like many of the free citizens are willing to say, hey, that's fine, restrict my rights, I'm okay with it. Um, this is one of the cases where, you know, as Ronald Reagan said, the most feared words in the English language are we are from the government and we're here to help. Um, right now, the government is acting as, you know, that, that stern parent that thinks that they know better and that we must abide by their rules. And they're, they're imposing uh, such insane regulations upon even churches. Whatever happened to the separation of church and state? You know, that's something that's always brought up if, you know, dare a person try to put up a nativity display on public property. But then the government has no problem telling churches what they can and cannot do at times like this. Mm -hmm. I, I have no problem with, you know, the, the state or local government saying, we recommend that you follow these precautions. But when they say you must do this or else, that, that's a clear violation of our First Amendment rights. Absolutely. And as and I'll go ahead and we'll spoil it. We, we talked about this. Um, the question I posed to you uh, for episode 212 was, as, a, as Christians, do we defy the government in that case? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, because in that case, we, if we allow them to trample on our rights and we do nothing about it, what kind of witness does that say about the Christian faith? that we are going to allow the government to suppress the free exercise of religion. That's not too far a step from being like it is in China, where only those churches sanctioned by the, the Communist Party are permitted to hold public services. In China, you have to be a member of the Communist Party in order to serve as a pastor in a church that is sanctioned by the government. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, let's see here. Dan has a question for us. What if a religion believes that they're... I think he left out a D there, God. That their God will protect them from the coronavirus and they want to go, they want to gather. Do we stop them and on what grounds? Mm, this... And I would say no. Um, that, uh, that, we shouldn't restrict them. Um, I, I had a phone call with the pastor last night and uh, he has a church with a very large sanctuary. They are well below 50 in attendance, especially during this time. And so they just all spread out. They stay about six feet apart. He conducts the public service. And so far in Minnesota, there hasn't been any mandate from the governor that uh, we are prohibited from holding church services. So, you know, he's good to do whatever it is that he wants to do. Um, I was leaning towards the side of continuing public services and finding a, a creative way to do that. Uh, but that was not the decision that the Board of Elders made. Right. And that was the decision that our our church came to as well. And we're trying to find some creative ways to um, to move forward. Uh, we've decided to to suspend services for a couple of weeks and reassess as well. Um, and I don't know what the situation is down there, but we do have active cases within this county and the surrounding counties. Uh, so I, I personally know two people that, that do have the virus. Uh, so I, I think that was part of the urgency with the decision on, on the part of the elders was, we have cases within the local area, people that we know, members of a neighboring church, that we need to protect the members of our congregation. Right. We have, um, we don't, 
as far as I know, we don't have any, I could be wrong. I don't think we have any within the congregation, but we, one of the concerns with our church, um, I don't know that we always hit 50, but we are in a situation where we don't have our own church. Um, we are, we are a relatively new mission. Uh, so we are, uh, building a, uh, trying to grow our building fund to try to build our own church. And so we have, we're renting a space and we are very limited and therefore we are very, at times, especially when we have, if we have, um, uh, when lots of people show up and that's becoming more and more, we're, we're growing very rapidly, it gets pretty tight in there. And that's, I think the biggest concern for us is there's not a lot, there's no room to spread out. There's no room for us to do six feet apart. It's just not possible. And so the decision of the elders, I'm, I don't speak, I can't speak for them because I don't, I haven't, I haven't gotten there. Um, I haven't talked to them about their decision, but I suspect that that played into the decision because knowing the size of, a, of the space and our inability to actually spread the congregation out within that space, I'm sure that played into it. Um, so let's see. I'm guessing this is from Jackie. Um, our Lutheran church is having services as podcasts, which is, which is great. And I think ours is doing that as well. Um, and I suggested doing um, what, uh, what uh, you're doing pastor. Uh, I suggested that our pastor Clint Stark take a, a page out of your book and throw a phone on the lectern and, um, and uh, just, start a live stream and stream your stream the services uh, or from his office and uh, and share the word uh, live every Sunday uh, and every Wednesday and hopefully um, and he said he would he would take that idea to the board and hopefully that's something that will um, that will materialize that would be really cool um, let's see if we can Pastor Wolf Muller is doing that too oh that's right I saw him I, I saw him start that this mm -hmm. this week uh let's see yeah and fisk has been doing it but i s saw wolf Muller's this week good I, I i hope i hope more people do it because the danger is that that more um the more we stay away the easier it's going to be to for some to not go back and um what we need, especially in times like this, when it's fear that's driving us and we're we're so concerned about the future and we're so worried about what's going to happen next and we're so worried about our financial situation and our family and our health, um, we this is the perfect time for us to turn to God's word and and to to turn to him for comfort. And if we can't go to church, how are we going to get it? Absolutely. And, you know, it's nice that we have this technology available to us. Um, I've been doing this the Sunday sermon for a little over a year now, as well as when we had midweek services. And at first, you know, I was a little bit nervous about doing this. Hey, you know, all the world could see me if they want. <laughs> right. um, but it, it really is great. You know, I there was uh, the, Do it the, with the, the mask on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, if you're really self-conscious about your personal appearance, you know, I've kind of gotten over that. I decided to stop growing the hair on top and grow it on my chin instead. Um, but uh, today, for example, uh, with the devotion that I did, there was someone in Africa that was watching that devotion. Very cool. Uh, so, yeah, it's my little church here in the middle of nowhere has gone international. <laughs> <laughs> in Willow Creek. That's right. Got to say it right. That's right. It's only the city folk that call it Willow Creek. <laughs> um, so, Mia, your um, your speaking and and travel is kind of on hold at the moment. You don't have um, mm -hmm. you don't have daughter at home at the moment. What's Leah doing? What is what's her situation at the moment? Is is school kind so of so she's. 
Yeah. She's on spring break this week, but they had already planned to do online for the rest of the semester. And that was before the governor had made all the announcements about the 10 people and stuff like that. Um, so, oh, she'll so even go in Montana, Wednesday. they're. Yeah. She'll, and she'll be, and actually she's back in Colorado. Oh, so, awesome. Yeah. She's in Colorado. Um, she came the beginning of fall semester. Okay. back to Colorado um, for health reasons and stuff like that. But so she's doing online for the remainder of the semester. But our Hunter education has been canceled. Um, I was supposed to go up to Grand Junction, Colorado to teach with a girl and a gun. And that event has been canceled. And it was um, the last weekend of April, first weekend of May. And it's been canceled. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Grand Junction. Was that going to be at Cameo? Yep. Oh, yeah. I so want to go to that facility. I have I haven't been, been there yet either. Really? I was excited too. Yeah. There's they're supposed to be holding the national championship, the IDPA national championship for the, there for the next two years. Yeah. Um, and everything I've seen, it just looks phenomenal. And I I've been um, uh, I've had invitations to go to the Colorado State and the Rocky Mountain Regional out there. They have two matches out there. And I just see the videos and the pictures and the the, the view and, and the wildlife. I mean, they have to take breaks because the bighorn come down off the off the mountain on the back of the bays. And they're just like, OK, hold up. We got to stop. And then once they move on, shooting continues. And it's really cool. Um, I've I've been dying to get out there. And uh, it's, a, it's a shame that. Uh, that your class was canceled. Um, yeah. What else? What else do you have planned for the for the rest of the year that you hope will uh, will will not get disrupted by all this? Um, in June is the DC project where we go to Washington DC, and then I also have the Professional Outdoor Media Association conference is in June as well. So right. hopefully we'll be able to have those. Um, with Safari Club International, our May board meetings um, have been changed to online. So that got canceled, too. OK. Is POMA always in the same place or do they do they move no. that around? It's moved around this year. It'll be in Franklin, Tennessee. So it's 20 minutes south of Nashville. Oh, OK. I know where that is. Yeah. OK. Yeah, it's a different place every year. Cool. All right. What uh, time of you always report from there for the show? What uh, time of year is that? That is the second or third week of June. Okay. Fingers crossed that that won't get disrupted. Um, I've seen yeah, some. We've been interviewing all week for the uh, executive director for that. And that's kind of one of the questions that I posed to them is what would you do if this had to be canceled and you were the director and it's been interesting <laughs> to hear some of the applicants answers. <laughs> Did, have you considered uh, running for that position yourself? No, no, <laughs> don't want that. <laughs> don't need no, that. Not even remotely. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have enough jobs. Right. Yep. Um, what about uh, hunting trips? What have uh, what and uh, hunting seasons coming up uh, this year? What are what have you been hoping to do this year? Fingers crossed. Well, we've applied for some hunting hunting licenses in New Mexico that I'm hoping we can draw, and then we'll do some for Colorado as well, and everything else will kind of revolve around that as right. far as if we travel or anything. So. Anything new that Nothing you big. haven't done before? Nothing like the Russian um, bear hunting trip or anything like that. <laughs> That's still one of my favorite no, stories. No, and, and Italy is not on my list this year either. No. So um, I don't know. It's, it's kind of a lot of times I get invited to those at the last minute and um, try to squeeze them in my schedule where I can. Right. So no trips to the Beretta factory or anything like that. <laughs> No. <laughs> Not going to happen. Uh, let's see here. Um, got a couple of more comments. Uh, Dan with a funny. You're now a televangelist. <laughs> Have you picked out your private jet yet? Creflo Dollar. 
Nick Ruffalo dollar, yeah. <laughs> I guess I'd have to change my name to something fancy like that. <laughs> um, let's see. So, uh, Pastor, what? Um, so you guys are on kind of on hold for a couple of weeks. What is your congregation? What is the size of your congregation, and what is kind of the makeup of demographically? Is it? I've been in different, like the the congregation I came from in North Carolina was very um, heavily weighted towards the older side, and so I could see this uh, the virus scare being a very very big concern for them, given the uh, the demographic it's not quite the same with my current church it's a younger group but there are still some very very frail people in our congregation that that i'm sure weighed heavily on the decision for us to uh, to postpone our services what is what do you what weighed in on the to the decision for you guys and and your board of elders when it came to the decision to postpone uh, a lot of it had to do with the fact that we do have some older numbers, or older members, I should say. Um, as far as numbers go, uh, I would say maybe 20%, 25% would be in, in the 70 or older. Um, we've, we've got a pretty good uh, representation across all age groups within our church. Uh, the youngest, I think, is three and the oldest is, you know, 95, 96. Um, so we got, uh, and our average attendance is on a bad week, it's about 50. Um, usually it's 65 to 75. So uh, we, we do have a pretty active congregation, uh, lots of young families. And that's what made this a really difficult decision because it's either – okay, all you old people, you have to stay home. Right. And uh, us young folk are going to keep on going as usual. Uh, it could be, there, there was a, <laughs> this is just uh, heartbreaking. There was a church up in the Twin Cities area, a Methodist church that told all of their older members, you can't come to church here anymore. Um, because oh, we I want remember to be, that. Yeah, we want to be a young, growing church, and we can't do that with all you old people here. So uh, you can leave and then, you know, in two years from now, you can ask to come back and we'll let you know if you can or can't. Yeah. It's... I remember that story. I was just like, oh my, that's, but you, but we want you to still contribute financially yeah. to the growth of the church. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. It's like, yeah, I kick you in the pants and, and uh, yeah, stay away. We don't want to see your wrinkly old faces. But if you don't mind, stick around, you know, when we're not having service and mow the yard and and send us a little money every now and then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> good old, uh, good old Christian love right there. Um, what is your, uh, Mia, what is your church uh, congregation like uh, demographically? You're in a, you two are in small towns. I'm in. I'm not. I'm in a kind of a suburban uh, central Texas town. Yeah. And from what um, Pastor Bennett's saying, the Pagosa Church is similar in size. Um, they have one service on Sunday, and it's usually between 50 and 60. And really, there are a lot of families now. It used to be primarily an older demographic, but there's a lot of young families with a lot of young children now. So it's kind of nice to see. And it's similar in Durango. They probably have closer to 100. I live in why I talk about these three churches is I live about an hour from three different churches. <laughs> so <laughs> it kind of depends on what I have to do, which direction I go. And um, but the one in Farmington is probably the largest, but he has two services. So the earliest one at eight in the morning is a lot of elderly. And then the next one is more families. Uh, and I usually go to the, the earlier one um, just because I'm an early bird. So. Yeah, you definitely are. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy your, your morning uh, 
cup of coffee posts on Facebook. And uh, I used to enjoy them later in the day. I've become uh, more of an early bird now that with uh, with my new job, getting up earlier, I now cannot sleep late anymore. It's weird how that happens. Mm-hmm. Um, but now, now I get to enjoy your morning posts as they happen, which is kind of cool. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's see. Uh, let's see if we can get. Well, we got a few minutes left. Oh no, she disappeared again. The black plague took her from us before her time. Um, we got a couple of minutes, about ten minutes left. I want to grab a couple, and she's back. There she is. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. We've got a few people still watching on. I want to grab a couple here and see if we can get a couple of guests to join us. Where's my, I've got too many things going on here. I need to add another tab. That's what I'm missing. I closed tab that had my message board in it. So, oh, and it signed me out. Awesome. Love when that happens. Um, I guess schools are all closed there, Mia. Seeing like everybody's like panicked because they have to now put up with their kids. <laughs> well, I mean, with not being allowed to have ten people, it kind of makes school the yeah. thing that you can't Completely do. Completely so. <laughs> impossible. Yeah. Yeah. What was the Facebook post I saw somebody or the meme that somebody posted that said, uh, you're about to find out that your your kids' uh, teachers were were right. <laughs> A lot of parents about to find out yeah. they weren't lying. All right, let's see. Messages, messages, patrons. I've kind of been surprised at the parents that are upset that they have to spend time with their kids. It, it's really sad. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. I. From that perspective, that makes no sense to me. I'm I'm absolutely thrilled to have my kids home, although one of them is now working. So he's out actually working retail at, at a local CVS and then like swilling around in this stuff and then having to bring it home. But my daughter is at home all the time, which is which is awesome. I get to, to see her all the di- all the time. But so I don't under. Yeah, I agree. I don't understand that. On the on the other hand, one of the points that we were talking about on on the show, um, this for this weekend show was all the people who now have to make all these alternate arrangements for because their kids are now at home, and they either have to take off from work or they have to take reduced hours or they have to find some sort of paid childcare or they got to pawn the kids off on grandparents or something like that. And it's now put a complete strain on their finances or on their family. Um, and, and that's, uh, I think quite unfortunate. One of the beautiful things that's happened here in Minnesota is that, um, the YMCA has offered to open up their doors to any children so that they are more or less providing free child care by taking care of other people's kids during this time. I'm sure they're going to have to put a limit on that because well, you don't you know, get more than 10 at a time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the way my kids have been fighting once in a while this past week, I'm ready to drive the 30 minutes to Mankato <laughs> to drop them off at the YMCA at this point, especially if it's free. Um, but uh, no, I wouldn't do that. Um, <laughs> But I'm, I'm hoping to see some other solutions like that across various states because the, the disruption that it's causing in the family structure, um, yeah. I, I can't imagine what it would be like for myself if uh, my wife had to be working a regular job and the kids were home. Um, I'd probably go through a lot more whiskey, but I don't even know if the liquor stores are open anymore. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) exactly but with Um, myself i I can't i can't go visit anyone um i I have a a member who was just in the hospital in the emergency room i couldn't go see them i can't go see anyone in nursing homes unless it's a life or death situation even then if they are dying it's really questionable whether they even would let me come in and minister to that person. Oh, um, so 
the the difficulties that it's made for me with my vocation as a pastor it uh, it really is heartbreaking because I'm not in a position right now where I can provide pastoral care to those people that you know need it the most the people that are isolated in nursing homes um, and these are the people that aren't going to be able to whip out their smartphone and watch the sermon on Facebook because these people don't have cell phones um, so it's and that's, you know, maybe that's something that, that I should post about on Facebook, that if you have a, a loved one in the nursing home, get them a phone so that they can be, you know, able to interact with their family, with their church and so forth. There was a, there was a really neat uh, post I saw on social media the other day, and it was a picture that somebody had shared. Um, I don't remember where it was from. Um, it was a picture from a, a nursing home that I think it was one of the nurses had shared and it was a, an elderly gentleman sitting, talking to his grandson and, or maybe oh, it was yeah. his, his son and his son was sitting outside the window in the yard. He had brought a, a lawn chair and he was uh, the, on his phone with his dad. Um, and he came every day and propped out, you know, just unfolded the lawn chair, sat down and, and talked to dad through the window. So he didn't, uh, you know, risk infecting him, which was, I thought was really, really sweet. Yeah, absolutely. I keep into contact with those people. Um, they need that human interaction right now more than anything. Absolutely. And, and seems to me that those are the places that we should have, you know, that's, we talked about this on the show why we didn't go the way of South Korea, which was to focus on restricting the um, the access or, or, or protecting the people who are really the most at risk, those at the at the extremes in the age spectrum and those who have extenuating circumstances, health circumstances and trusting our citizens to make good decisions and getting good information out to people about, you know, we recommend you do this. We recommend you, you, you self uh, isolate and we recommend you wash your hands and avoid these sorts of situations rather than going to the extreme of shutting down the whole country and now potentially risking a recession or maybe worse. Yeah. Is it worth doing this? If there is a family that ends up dying of starvation because they couldn't get any food. Yeah. You no, know, and that, that we're looking at a, a very real situation with that because there are a lot of people out there. They live paycheck to paycheck. Now they don't have a job and they're not the kind of people that go out and buy two, three weeks worth of groceries at a time. So they might have a few days left before they're out of food in the house. Yeah. We're creating that kind of situation by having these policies that, in my opinion, is is a, uh, a gross overreaction. There could have been a far more uh, measured way to approach this situation than saying everybody quarantine yourself for the next two weeks. Yes, that helps the stop the or not stop but slow the spread of the virus. But the damage that's being done to our economy is it worth it? You know, and I, I'm wondering if. This will be studied for years to come where people will look back in hindsight and said, yeah, maybe that wasn't the best thing to do. Yep. Unfortunately, it may turn out to be like Japan where you've got the loss, you have a lost generation and they look back on what on the economic decisions that they made a generation later and you can't get those years back and no. you've, you've destroyed a whole generation's hopes and dreams because you made these horrible decisions and crashed the economy for 25 years. Um, let's get back to some quick uh, comments here. Uh, Dan points, Dan says, um, as an elder at my church, we've decided to continue to provide our Sunday services live and put them on YouTube. Very good. Awesome. Um, David, who is uh, with us, uh, we, my wife, homeschool, and I, for one, stay pretty insulated from the rest of the public, working full time. So I haven't really seen how the public is reacting in Connecticut. It's like that joke I saw, um, you know, for for a lot of us uh, who are um, 
introverts, uh, we're going to find out really quick how much our lives are not going to change. <laughs> 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 um, Ed, my last church had, or my church had its last open service last Sunday. Switched to streaming. Good, awesome. Um, and and by good and awesome, I'm basically I'm not saying good that we that you stopped your live services, but good that your your church is continuing to provide the word to your to your congregation. Um, Quick note, I wanted to point out here too. Um, on Sunday in the sermon, I went off script script a little bit, and instead of saying that there were roughly fifteen hundred cases of coronavirus at the point, I said fifteen thousand. Oh boy! Well, as of today, I'm correct. Because we have increased tenfold within the last week of the number of, of cases, so and that's going to, and then for the for the largely uninformed, that's going to panic people even further. And the problem is, exactly. and the reason for that is that we've increased the number of tests. It's we've increased not because, the number of tests, yeah, and and a lot of it too is that you know how quickly did the virus spread while it was still during the incubation period. I think a lot of the spike that we're seeing in cases is because people have surpassed the incubation period and now they are becoming symptomatic and getting tested. Yeah. But now the problem that we're running into is that you have places that are saying that uh, we're not going to test anymore unless you're within the risk group for the elderly or those with pre-existing conditions because people are panicking saying, oh, I've got the coronavirus. I need to go get tested. And they're wasting a lot of tests, so they're saying we're only going to test for those whom we think it's it's absolutely necessary for. Right. Well, and and um, the uh, CDC, Trump, and and all these uh, politicians are pushing for more and more testing, and we're seeing more testing being done. They're calling for for increased testing, and that is by definition going to result in more people being diagnosed. And so naturally, we're going to see an uptick in the numbers. And for those who aren't really paying attention, don't realize that we didn't really have very good data to begin with, like you and I were talking about when we when we recorded last night. We're going to I mean, that's going to panic people that thinking that, oh, my goodness, this thing's going this is out of control when we probably already had those numbers and just didn't realize it. Right, right. And. Part of me wonders how much of this isn't, you know, when we had the H1N1 virus, the uh, there was an estimated 60 million people that had the virus. That's 20% of our population. Uh, mm -hmm. And based on the mortality rates, you know, and of course, how can they estimate mortality rates at this point when they don't know how many people even have the virus uh, and, and they haven't, you know, you have a lot of people that still haven't recovered yet. So you can't really know the mortality rate until the virus has already run its course. Um, but, uh, yeah. yeah, it's what happens if we've got a 2% mortality rate and we get 60 million people infected like it was with H1N1. H1N1 was not nearly as, as fatal, and, uh, but, but it spread very rapidly. So do we want to lose 3 million people uh, of our population from a virus? Right. Yeah, it's. I just wish we had better data before we went full panic mode. We're now at the point where it's like, well, we're we're we've already crossed that river. We yeah, can't, we can't really go back. But, and and the ego of politicians then weighs into that too, that they don't want to say, "Hey, we were wrong, we overreacted, so let's just keep continuing with this course of action." Yes. Well, hey, uh, before we wrap up, really quick, um, the one thing that I did see today that that came out that really ticked me off was this gang of four, and I'm sure there's probably more of them, members of the the Senate Intelligence Committee, which apparently found out how bad this this was going to be and then sold off all their stocks and got richer um including three republicans and Diane Feinstein um before all of this broke yeah uh, yeah your thoughts on that that's malfeasance of the highest order uh, that 
you did something um, that that comes within the same realm, I would say, of, of insider trading that yeah. you knew this was going to happen. And so you did something that benefited yourself while everyone else gets screwed in the process. Yeah. You know, the situation that we have is it's a huge crap sandwich and we all have to take a bite, you know, and, and these some, folks, some aren't getting that cramp sandwich, obviously. <laughs> no, they're, they're, they're getting, you know, a million bucks or more out of the uh, stocks and options that they sold off uh, prematurely before the, the crash hit. And that's, and that's what really ticks me off. And we were, and, and this is the, you know, the, the purpose of our show this week and, and maybe next week if, if I decide to break this up into two shows, the purpose is to talk about um, government from, from the perspective of what government should be doing for us. What is the purpose of government in terms of what it owes its citizens? And to me, as you're sitting there, if you're a, if you're a politician and you're sitting there and, and you know this thing is coming, and you know it's going to wipe out old people and their savings and, and their retirement accounts, and you freaking profit off of this without letting everybody else, you know it's coming, and you you sell off all your stock so that you can profit before everybody else, and then granny gets wiped out down the road, plus granny is now susceptible to this virus and it may kill her, then, yeah, your head should roll. You should not only lose your job, but you should, that's, that's hanging a fence. And I'm, I, I, when I saw those guys faces and when I saw that list and when I heard how much money they, they made, and I know there's got to be more people than that. That's, that's as swampy as it gets. That is the, that's the swamp that we were, that, that Trump was talking about getting rid of. And if, and all those, you know, you wonder how these people go to Congress on $142,000 a year and come out millionaires multi, multiple times over, this is how it happens. And this yep, is absolutely. sick. And it's got to stop. And these people need to be made an example of. Like those goofy Hollywood moms who um, who are being made an example of because they, they the college scandal thing, I can't remember what their names were, the the strings that they pulled to try to get their kids into college. What was that? And they're being made an yeah. example of, right? We need to make an example of people like Di Fi and Richard Burr and Jim Inhofe and whatever the the blonde chick's name is. I can't think of her name because they've basically raped us while old people are losing their savings and facing the threat of getting a virus that may kill them. Right. That is absolutely sick. Well, for, for you and me, our retirement accounts, they will eventually recover. Mm -hmm. But for the, it's probably going to take a decade at this point. For these other folks, they might only have a decade left to live on. And now what do they have to live off of with their retirement account? It's lost probably more than half of its value by this point. Yep. Yep, exactly. That's just, just awful. Oh, that's a pleasant note to finish on. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's a good, it's a good argument for term limits because oh, absolutely. so often, even if you go into public office without the intention of being a self-serving politician, you stay in there long enough, nine times out of 10, you become corrupt to the point where you look out for yourself more than you look out for your constituents. Yep. It changes everybody, no matter how good they are. When they go in, they come out different. It doesn't yep, matter. Absolutely. All right, my friend. Uh, thank you so much for, for doing it for t two nights in a row. I, I've really enjoyed spending time with you again. And uh, thank you to Dan and, and to Edwin and David and to the Russos for hanging out. And um, David is all for the term limits. <laughs> two thumbs up. <laughs> yep and i agree with uh, i agree with you dan our, our leaders need to understand what it is to be a servant first and unfortunately they have lost that entirely they are self-serving um congress critters and we need to we need to do something about it they need they absolutely need term limits i'm all for it let's make it happen
Okay, enough of that. Episode 212, coming your way on Sunday. We are going to be talking more about this and about the various government um, uh, responses from all levels to this uh, to this virus. Um, there's so much content. <laughs> you and I were joking about the, the bloopers. I got 12 of them. <laughs> I'm not joking. There's 12 bloopers, s- completely separate bloopers out of this. I think there's enough content probably for two whole episodes. So I'm, I'm thinking rather than do a, you know, 40 minute show and then another 50 minutes of exclusive content for the gun club. It's so good. I think I'm going to do two shows. So episode two, thir- two, two, twelve and two thirteen. it's going to be, like I said, Corona Palooza. And, uh, there still probably will be a little bit of, of extra for the gun club. Uh, so be sure to tune in for that. That will drop on Sunday night at uh, 6 p.m. Central. Thank you guys for tuning in. And, uh, Pastor, have a great weekend. Christ's blessings to you and your congregation. And uh, uh, we will talk to you next time. Thank you. Christ blesses to you, too. And for all of you who joined us for this hangout, thank you very much for being here. For show notes, be sure to visit our website at www.armedlutheran.us. Check out the Facebook page, The Armed Lutheran, or join our Facebook group, Fans of Armed Lutheran Radio. If you like what you hear, please leave us a comment on our feedback page at armedlutheran.us slash feedback, or a review on iTunes, and let us know what you think. Thank you for listening to Armed Lutheran Radio.